forward, let me call on stage for a panel discussion Mayor Mariam Thomas, presenter, podcaster, producer, and founder made in India. Let's welcome with your energy. Sri Raman Tyagarajan, co-founder and CEO Avas.com. Mantra, founder, M and M Talkies. Yeah, absolutely. Niti Sansare, founder. Odd Story, Sunil Kumaran, COO, Big FM, a very warm welcome, Sunil Karna, founder, songdu.com. And ladies and gentlemen, to moderate this session, we have founder, CEO, and editor-in-chief, Mr. Anil N.M. Wanwari, to take this forward. Let's Welcome with your inner to take applause. Thank you. Uh, we know there's a lot of potential in audio, whether it's uh, audio books, whether it's podcasting. I didn't mention audio books earlier, but they're brilliant to listen to. Or oh, whether it's uh, the different genres which are coming in podcast and different radio formats which are coming up. So I'd like to get the bad news of the way here. How are we expecting 2023 to be? Who's going to begin? Who's going to start saying? What do we expect in the coming year? You want to begin? Um, so I literally read an article today, first thing in the morning. Um, and sorry to burst everyone's bubble or poo poo the party, but uh, I'm so good that I started with poo poo. But I will say one thing is that. I think 2020 saw this huge, the pandemic saw a huge explosion of like podcasts. And I think one of the things that was there in this article was saying that um, from 2020 to 2022, um, there's been a massive drop in the number of new podcasts launched, um, which I think would is a given, but I think the, the trends around what that means is that there may be a sort of slowdown in listenerships compared to what we were seeing in 2020, and that um, are we gonna see new shows? Are people going to be more inclined to listen to regular shows that are releasing daily and weekly versus seasonally? So there's a lot of questions up in the air, and uh, can I predict the future? Absolutely not, so yes. <laughs> and leave that to uh, suit sales and so on. I would share some insight from Lucid perspective where we are having this portal to support Indian musicians. Uh, the data published by Spotify, uh, you know, indicated that two years back, number of creators who uploaded the music on Spotify through various labels, distributors, was around five million. Last year, it was eight million. So a whopping jump of three million creators, and next two years, this number is going to cross eleven million. So the last, because production, you know, cost of production is going down, new technology, new tools are coming. I, I think it is just growing at a mind-boggling space, the kind of content which is getting created. And because it is now non-linear broadcast or non-on-demand uh, thing, it is no more really the clutches of that linear thing that whatever masses want, only that content could be consumed. Here there is long tail of content creation, whether it is music, podcasts, etc. And people are consuming in a big, big manner. It's just that uh, the revolution which is taking place, it is happening more, uh, perhaps definitely on the music side, it is more on the younger generations, which uh, perhaps not many people who are decision makers in various brands, etc. They are perhaps not feeling that much, but it is very much obvious now what is happening. So I see very, very optimistic. Yes. Uh, what I totally we discussed as the report, right? I don't know how much of that represents our country in that, and also if we keep 2020 in mind, that was very that was pandemic. People were trying podcasting because of free apps like Anchor. They just created one episode, two episode. They just wanted to see how it is growing. But now I believe serious people who understand this space are stepping into this game and then when they are creating content that's long term. One of the reasons is because I work with a lot of 
creators and influencers and I'm talking about biggies on Instagram when they are think and YouTube when they are thinking that they need to step into that space which automatically will make it slightly more massy because others will also understand the importance of that space and they would also like to enter. So uh, there is a book by this gentleman called Chris Zook which says profit from the core. Okay? And I think for us at radio and the radio industry per se, it wouldn't have been more relevant time than this to kind of profit from its core. If you build a legacy for about 15 years where we have really built some solid strengths and I think if you ask me what 2023 has been in store or 2024, it's going to be our time to pivot on these strengths and leverage the opportunities that are coming away. And that's going to be what 2023 is going to be for radio as an industry and for us as a brand. Yeah, so we are ours.com, right? We have been fiercely independent platform. Now, this year what we are noticing or starting late last year is almost all the big publishers, whether it is news or even terrestrial radio, they all have been moving away from conventional and massively transforming to digital play, right? So, for example, two years ago, it was almost like, you know, in the land of the blind, uh, blind man with one eye is the king and I was that one eye guy, right? Now, almost all the traditional guys are now having a digital app and digital distribution and they're taking it seriously, right? So, whatever the head start we had, it will run out because these large guys have big pockets, but it's good news for the category because audio, the envelope is being pushed for the... Uh, Category. So, it is an opportunity because it shows that if, if a large publisher and a radio company with, you know, uh, deep pockets are putting that money in digital uh, version of audio, so we are already there. So, now we need to, you know, up our game and not concede at this point. So, that's a good news and bad news in mix uh, katamita for us right now as I was not yeah. Okay, see, but if you're reading the indications, broad economic indicators, uh, it's going to be a tough year very tough here in every way. Uh, Spotify is going to announce layoffs this week uh, globally and I believe the podcast division is also going to see some sort of uh, layoffs. So from a creator who runs an aggregator distribution platform, what does it mean for you uh, that, you know, the news, actually it's mixed. I thought it was bad news but they seem positive. Uh, so what's your perspective? I, I think we're all trying to see the world through colored glasses at this point of time and uh, no, you're absolutely right, Anil. Uh, there is a jolt that one can feel, but I think by just like any other industry, which uh, initiates and it starts off on a high, it's a vertical rise, and then there is a time that comes when stagnation hits in, and that's where the sheer strength of the industry uh, is showcased. Whether you can maintain that stagnation, of course, 2020 was a huge rise. People were discovering uh, podcasts. At this point of time, as we are directly connected with the listeners as MM Talkies, we get a lot of reaction from our listeners. We know that they are they're diversifying themselves, they're going to newer forums, they are exploring podcasts too. So yes, uh, not a tip. I wouldn't take that one news or one article straight to heart. Uh, and I would, uh, I believe in the industry, 2023, 24 and 25, three years to be their golden years. Fabulous. I'm happy. So that's not bad news. It's good news. So you totally destroyed my intro, which I wanted to give the dark news. You've given it good news. So let's let's go on. What's good about uh, the audio industry? Beginning with Suni. What's great about it? Since you know we are looking at it optimistically, not with probably with rose tinted glasses, I believe. But let's talk about the good of the audio industry. Sure. So, so uh, this is the way I just wanted to kind of add on to what Mandra has said, you know, and the, the doomsday prediction that we're all kind of looking and staring at is I think overstated, very frankly. Uh, we have to understand that we have come out of a very bad phase, which was COVID, right? And we were all kind of learning and grappling with that rapid change that happened in environment. And we, as in any business, we all evolved very, very rapidly. So this is a phase of consolidation and you cannot expect, you know, uh, to leapfrog when it comes to a phase of consolidation. This is the time where you really sharpen your tool, right? So for us, for instance, in the radio industry, like I was mentioning, we are going to pivot on a whole lot of digital opportunities that is coming out. Now, that doesn't mean we will do it at, instead of radio, right? Radio still run, runs my, you know, the, the pace for the bills. So the the point is how do you balance that pace of growth? Right? Where do you kind of find the tipping point? How much do I invest my time and energy behind 
your initiatives is the call that we need to all kind of take right now. Not to worry unduly that you know this is all a downward slide. It's not. We have kind of filled a very solid foundation when it comes to all the digital opportunities in the audio space. And I think it's now time to understand where your strengths are, what can you leverage and what should you bet on. I think that's where the thing is. But I see even radio internationally going towards layoffs, like the other sectors have come into. Whether it's Swedish radio, we're radio, which are, look, at, look at all the major radio stations that are going to be layoffs because you know there's a downturn, there's an economic compression happening. So yeah. it's not an expansion. That's exactly the point. So yeah. point is so we see that happening in radio. We don't see that happening here. Because we think we are smarter, because we think we know where to pivot and what to pivot on. Okay? So last two years have been extensive amount of work understanding what are the digital opportunities that we as a radio player can leverage. Okay? So if I have a strength of 100 plus jobs, now each of them are influencers which are not just radio influencers, they are micro nano influencers. Right? Doesn't that open up a complete green field for me of going into influencer marketing as a space? Right? I have built an expertise over the last 15 years about I know what works in audio, what doesn't. Right? Doesn't that give me a huge advantage when it comes to spaces like uh, podcast or smart speakers or whatever you say? So this is where the opportunity lies. It's about pivoting and pivoting at the right time. I think that's what the trick is. And it's not about being unduly worried that the, you know, there's a doomsday happening there. Uh, I'm going to go on to Shri Yeah. yeah. What about, same question. It's a, continuing with that question that uh, there are dark clouds on the horizon. Right, right. right. And, yeah. and, 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 and are we going to see cutbacks? Are we going to see more cautious investments? Are we going to see uh, brands being brands shying away from this meeting? We have a lot to do to evangelize for you. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So, so in, if you look at the short term, if you take it so close to our eyes, everything looks so bad because um, we we are, we don't look at it quarter on quarter at all, right? So we have, believe it or not, a 20 year horizon. That's what we are looking at. We are looking at you know in the 90s when uh, Sun TVs and Star TVs started with 3R programming, and today they are all like you know 7,000 crore uh, revenue companies, right? So we are looking at a 20 year horizon. So anything that happens in a quarter or six months, I am genuinely not concerned because mentally we are prepared for that. In fact, uh, yes, there are so many bumps in the road when it comes to monetization, the flavor of the season changes, uh, some new innovations come and go, like some short videos will come and go, some new uh, chat GPT will come and go, right? So marketing budgets will always go for that as calling as innovations. But like I said, we are looking at a very, very long term uh, horizon here and then the one thing we are very very steadfastly committed to is keeping our audience it's not about getting more audience it's also about keeping the ones you have so that only happens if you are continuously invested in giving them fresh content so a lot of our efforts goes in doing that uh, no matter what the cost for us is thankfully our company structure we have other services that takes care of this product and so on so we are looking at a long term prospects so i'm not worried in the shop So uh, I think uh, if we look at the industry, uh, it is just growing and most of the trends when you say it is the economy is looking like going down etc, they are perhaps more valid for mature markets, not really the trend which is just growing and it's a nascent industry. Just to give you, you know, our experience, COVID time when so many industries went down, uh, we in our company saw 100% growth happening, revenues. Uh, and let's understand because it's very important to understand that why is it happening. There are always two sources of revenues. You know, one you say subscription driven and one is advertising driven. When you talk about the brands and you know there, there is a fragmentation of media and there are large number of opportunities for the brands are there. So there is a pressure for sure that how much advertising revenue can you get. But purchasing power of youth in India is increasing and if you can deliver content for which people are willing to pay, you have significant opportunities to tap. I can tell you from my experience on music industry, just two years back, it was unimaginable that ticketed events of 1,000 rupees for independent music will sell. Today, you know, there are guys who in two years, they are doing 10 gigs in 10 cities, and everywhere there are 1,000 people buying 1,000 rupees ticket. So, consumers are spending money. And that's a good thing that if you can create a content for which people are willing to spend money, you don't have to look at advertising in the for sure.
So as a creative, you know, person who creates, uh, do you see a lot more creation happening in the coming year? Or do you see controlled creation? So I have to be honest and say that like, functioning not just as a creator, but also as a production house. So I'm always able to see who are the kind of people who are approaching. There are more brands, more creators. I keep saying it's the season two syndrome, which is like they get the experience of creating their own show, but you reach like a sort of um, a critical point where you're like, I need to do something a little better, a little more, which is when they sort of come to us because we're able to streamline a lot of their production processes. We're able to do more stuff and be more innovative in terms of format you know, and ways in which we can do this. So, I will say for sure, I have more brands approaching us to handle their production, more creators who want us. And also, the thing that I've seen a huge shift in literally the last three months is that we had, we now have four projects, three projects that have come from outside the country. So, and these are creators that are based in Europe, that are based in the UK, that are based in the US, who are hiring into India for us to handle their production. So there, for me, I'm seeing that like people still want to make shows, and they're definitely, I mean, I'm at least seeing that like it's interesting who are the kind of people who are actually looking at making shows. Yeah, Mansa, you're again, you're an aggregator, creator, distributor. No, absolutely. I, I see the kind of productions that are coming in, as you know, we specialize in audio fiction and the kind of adaptations that are coming to India, uh, we're very happy to have that. Uh, even a, a DC Comics wanting to come to India and create Batman it was, a, uh, was a huge move for Indian fiction market and that came to us. And there is clearly an uh, indication of many more such projects coming up in 2023. So when you have these international collaborations, when you have these uh, uh, adaptations of super hit podcasts that have already taken place all over the world, it uh, clearly states that uh, not only is the world looking at India as uh, a, as a consumer market for them, and uh, but at the same time, this is where they're getting the maximum hits also. Hey, thanks to India being the most populated country in the world now. But hey, there are lots and lots more listeners being generated every day. But one thing, and I'm sorry, you know this thing very well. It's the same radio listener who used to listen to you. It's the same generation shift which is listening to podcasts. So. Uh, the market for audio listeners will always remain. Of course, we cannot compare it to 2020. We all know that that year being a, a very, very tough year for the entire world as far as uh, the virus was concerned. But when it came uh, when it came to consumption of maybe OTT content or audio content, it skyrocketed. So you cannot compare that year to 2023. People have moved on towards better things. People have moved on towards living their life. But it's not that they have left this more completely. They are still hooked onto the medium. So your platform, what's what's the things on Mao's and the uh, DAO's as far as your, your platform is concerned? How much, of how much of consumption is happening? How many minutes is each user listening to? Could you share some data on sure. some of your shows? Yeah, so um, what we believe is... Pre-pandemic, so pandemic and post-pandemic. Okay, okay, sure. So um, we believe in owning the distribution pipelines, right? We, we do everything in house, the content is in house, product is in house. So we are uniquely available in 14 different places. For example, we are available in the back of a car of an Ola Play. So if you take your Ola Play, you can find ours there. We are available in Geo Setup Box. We are available in that thousand rupees Geo feature phone. We are available inside Paytm Inbox, right? This is other. This is apart from the our own Android and iOS, right? So pre-pandemic, we were in three languages, and uh, we used to get about four million streams a month. Uh, pandemic was uh, a uh, good time for the content that was in the healing, mental wellness and spiritual devotional content just picked up huge. And I think also a lot of people try podcast for the first time. Um, you know, we call this as uh, Bartan and business. That's what we used to call because even the CXOs of the world, there was no maid servant coming home and they were washing their own utensils. So video doesn't help them. So audio would really go well, right? So we used to um, create a lot of content for all types of people, right? And, and we were very careful about that. So that Around that time, uh, late 2020, we were at 6 million streams per month. And now we are about 10 million streams per month. So the average session I see, when a person comes to our uh, platform, the session is about 2.2. Uh, so that means they are trying at least two different episodes and little more than that. 
So we traditionally uh, we did a re user research and found out travel, of course, is the number one reason. So that two episodes roughly translate to an average travel time of 40 42 minutes for an Indian, which goes with the national average, right? So travel is the number one reason now. Like I said, you know, during pandemic, people had a lot of time. Now that they have other things to do, so travel is a best friend of audio in that sense. Um, yeah, but surprisingly, some unique stats come out. For example, like only we are available in Geo set top box. The numbers there are really, really promising. Uh, so, um, in fact, the reason we were even available on a Geo set top box TV, where audio only platform, you know, we don't even have any visual there, it's just a static image. Uh, but actually, you know, uh, I woke up early one day and I saw my dad turning on his TV uh, and then going about doing his work while he was listening to TV. So, actually, he was playing a video. But he was not listening to it. So that's when you know, he actually called my team and said, guys, uh, get our product on uh, TV as well. And now uh, we want to be on more OBT. I'm sorry, more set up boxes as well. Yeah, so um, there is a lot of moments in the day for audio where your hands are busy, your eyes are busy, like you're driving, cooking, cleaning, meditating, work out. And we, if we had more capital, probably I would outshout everyone and say that, look, uh, we are here and it, it, it's even ad free for most of the experience. But yeah, otherwise, um, it, it's going on good. And uh, I hope I answered your question. You did, yeah. But you know, you're, there's, a, there's, a, there's a research has shown, has shown that when you're listening to audio, you don't like advertising coming in. How is that problem going to be solved? How is that problem going to be solved when you have, when you're listening to podcasts, you're listening to fiction, you're so, listening to... Yeah, but then there is a solution to that also as in for like podcast industry. I know it is weird, you know, when you're listening to a spiritual podcast and this HDFC bank suddenly comes in. That makes no sense. That is true. But having said that, uh, just like radio, see, everything which was there in radio is somehow being adapted in podcasts. Uh, there are host read ads which are amazing because uh, podcasts though I like they definitely build smaller communities but they are stronger communities because it's like it's only audio you literally like connect with your host so much that you literally feel that the host is your friend and sitting right next to you obviously great content makes sense there people like me and mantra are brilliant there so that is what it is and in that case when that is happening when the host tells you something like this is something which i am using how about you that will work why wouldn't it it's just like and again it is different from basic influencers as well influencers have now blown up their communities are huge podcasters they have smaller communities but closer knit communities and that's why brands are approaching podcasts on, on a slightly different note altogether, because I think the, the point that Sri was making was also about retention of audience, right? And we are also talking about ads interfering with uh, the listening experience. I, I, I think the debate should always be about what exact, what is the kind of content we are putting out there. You know, the point that you were raising, I mean, some time back about the growth of the podcast space, I think it's also driven largely about the kind of content we are putting out there. There are sporadic, really good quality content, but I think the average content on the podcast space is still a long way to go, right? So I think that's where the focus should be, and that's where you hit a critical mass, where you start having support through subscription, whereby you can then ensure that you have an ad-free So it's a vicious circle in that. Yeah, but in, in the US, your subscription review, in India, it's never worked. That's the challenge. Well, Indians are not willing to if they can get something free, they're very happy. So, I mean, uh, Sirius and all of the other platforms, they're not, they're not free, if I'm correct. So, we, Indians are not willing to pay. You, know, you have to get, get the content right. It finally boils down to content. I, I think if you put out a great quality content, Indians are ready to pay. I think that's what the, the, the growth cycle that every country has gone through, India will also go through the same cycle. Right? There is a glut of content out there. Discoverability is a big challenge. You really need to be out there understanding and listening to what the audience want to say. So it's, it should not be from a myopic lens of whether it's audio or video, or audio works better than video and things like that. It is about whether you really understand the pulse of the audience. And being in a, in a radio space, we do that on an almost daily basis. That we take great pride in the fact that we really do that on a regular basis. You know. So just to give you an example, so when when the COVID phase was going on. Uh, we did a whole initiative called uh, the Big Hub. Okay, 
Now, it was all about the practical bad distraught about the fact that we are socially distanced, we are not able to meet each other and things like that. And we said, why don't we step in and say that we can give you that help through radio. Right? He can be your companion medium in this A hugely successful initiative. We did another initiative where we got Sadhguru and he spoke about how you cannot control what is happening in the environment, but you can control what is happening in the human. The point I'm trying to make is you have to be extremely relevant to the audience mood state. Right? The audience was going through that mind frame at that point in time. And if you understand that and if you stay connected, I'll you for a second, then you are yeah, yeah, I get that. So he, he believes that the podcasting industry is at a very nascent stage in terms of creativity, in terms of genres, in terms of formats. I mean, you have the solo genre, you have the interview format, you have the uh, a panel discussion format that you're doing right now. You have, you have different formats coming in. So where are we on this scale as far as content is concerned? She hasn't spoken for some time. Let us speak. Um, I'll say one thing, which is where Right now, there is, I think there's an equal measure of people who are willing to not pay. They will be like, I will listen to every ad, I don't care, I'm not going to pay one rupee. You also get, and my thing is that you also have to realize that to some extent our audience is varied, which is when we're talking about community building, we're talking about a lot of this. One of the things that no one now wants to be sold to. So brands are finding, which is why podcasting is so interesting because you get to create something that aligns with a brand that doesn't have you actually selling your product directly to them. And I think that's where podcasting allows you to have far more nuanced conversation. And I'm, I also have to say I equally get the number of people or brands who have come to me like, let's have a podcast where we're talking to interesting people doing interesting things. And I'm like, no, not another one of these inspirational and motivational, oh my gosh. But I would say is that podcasting allows you, it is a little bit of room to experiment, right? Like it's, you, it allow, my hope is that like brands will use this as an opportunity to do something a little different, a little out of the way. Like why don't we try doing something that we haven't done already in another media? And so I think that where my hope is that as a creator, brands are able to invest in like podcasts or shows or audio content or even ads within shows that are just that little bit different and that are allowing for a little more experiment. I get that, but you know, that's on the getting monetization in place. But what I was talking about, have we got, sorry, I keep thinking of my sister as radio and audio, but has the, has, has the podcasting and the radio fraternity Gone the limit in terms of formats, genres. Where are we at right now? Absolutely not. We have we have not at all in terms of format explored everything that we possibly could. I can definitely tell you that because like a lot of the shows that I do are in the nonfiction space, and I can definitely tell you that like there aren't enough. Like we just like. We're talking about documentary formats. We're talking about doing better storytelling. We're talking about different kinds of experiences that you can explore within audio. Definitely, we have not. We have not even t tip of the iceberg also in terms so of. So, is it because of shortage of talent? Is it because of shortage of ideas? Or is it shortage money, of investment? Money. I think it's all just begun right now. And uh, I, I, although being in the same industry, I wouldn't say there's any comparison between radio and podcast. Radio will always primarily be a music medium. Podcast is a top medium, and uh, the content which is always going to be the king is uh, what everybody's concentrating on. And I don't think there is any shortage of good content and podcasts within the last three, four years. Like say, talent in terms of exploring new formats, because oh, it's, it's yeah. brilliant. We go down to the kind of docu fictions or the documentaries that uh, me was talking about. Uh, maybe the Dosa Factory. May it be the uh, uh, maybe any of. Any of these science fiction shows or documentary shows, 13 minutes to the moon, if you listen to what BBC did with that, or the kind of docu-fiction that India is doing right now, that lies in Sinai, or many of the other uh, features are doing tremendously well. They were released many, many months back, but they still feature in the top 20 podcasts of the country. Why? Because people continue to listen to that. You're absolutely right, there is much more to be done, but I'd say the kind of time that we've spent in the industry, whatever we've done till now, is, uh, is uh, Sort of phenomenal, but yeah, somewhere around that. As far as fiction is concerned, we're very. 
With this superb Western presence on stage, with this, let me tell you and thank you so much for doing the honors. Let's hear it for our dignitaries. Just come on the stage for doing this honor, Mr. Anil N. M. Banwari, whose guidance and support has encouraged us to build this wonderful celebration. To stay back on stage and share your thoughts, please. Thank you. Very good afternoon to all of you, or good evening. Thank you for all for being here. The first sounds that a baby hears are a mother crooning, even before she can recognize that it's a mother. And that really calms the baby. So audio plays a very, very important role in all our lives, right from the time we are born. Uh, how many of you remember your mother? Without you really knowing she's your mother or your father, humming to you. How many of you remember? I'm crooning to you. Does everyone remember or no? I do. Can I have a show of hands? Does everyone remember Mama crooning to you? No, they don't want to show their hands anyway. Yeah. So audio plays a very important role in our lives, right from the times we are born. And as far as India goes, it should play, according to me, it should play an even bigger role because radio is a far more reaching medium than even television. And uh, internet, of course, is penetrating deep, and that's giving a better opportunity for audio and radio to spread. I'm glad that a bunch of young people have come up who are uh, actually indulging in this segment. And what I mean by indulging is it just started indulging. We have a long way to go in every, in every, every department of audio. Uh, why did we set up in the Indian Audio Summit? Because uh, we hope to catalyze this entire sector by bringing the industry together. Uh, we believe that we need to set up a platform which is by a love of radio. I love radio. I love audio because I've been a radio jockey myself way back in the 80s when probably some of you were in your knickers or in your shorts. So, uh, and a sports commentator as well. So, for me, radio is very, very close to my heart. And uh, that's where radio and music was set up around 15 years ago. Without much support from the industry in terms of advertising dollars or spends, we've been funding it over the years. And uh, I'm glad that we've got a new young team led by Michal Sumit, uh, Sumitro, Namrata, and the rest of the people who are actually exploring the potential that radio and music has in terms of engaging with the ecosystem. I'd like you to applaud the team. And, and you know, it is the other team who's driving it, and the face. But actually, this is the team which is driving it. Uh, a big thank you to uh, to them and a big thank you to the industry for participating in such big numbers because uh, we've chosen a different venue normally we choose a five-star hotel uh, for a, for a, for an event like this or for a gathering like this but again knowing the industry shorter budgets we have to choose this kind of a place i would love, love to have it hopefully the industry will explore in terms of spends on it maybe subscriptions uh, and you know, we, we can have a grander reception or grander get together in the, in the next few years. Uh, from our side, we, re we request your support and being a participant in whatever we do. If you can spare some money to get things going, we welcome it. If you can't at least participate and evangelize audio and radio, audio which includes podcasting as well as radio, and all the formats and all the genres that come under this. Uh, I won't talk a lot you know, beyond this. And thank you all for all being there. Hopefully, we have a great evening ahead. It's going to be windy outside and it's going to be a little cold, but you'll have a very, very warm welcome from all of us at radiomusic.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you very much for that warm and wonderful welcome. Well, I want to express my gratitude to all our sponsors for their support in building up this wonderful celebration. Music licensing partner, Hooper.ai, gifting partner, Nature for Nature Beauty. Let us have a look at an audio visual, please. <laughs> 